It is important to remember that you must either physically touch or, if out of reach, point to the item you are checking. You must also be detailed in your explanation of what you are looking for on each item being checked. However, be sure when you are telling the examiner what you are checking and why that you make eye contact with the examiner to assure that he or she can hear you. If they don't hear you, you may as well not have said it. Before beginning the pre-trip, remove the key from the ignition and place it in your pocket. Check that the parking brake is set and the vehicle is chocked. Be sure to listen carefully to the examiner and follow directions given to you precisely. You may be asked to start somewhere other than the front of the vehicle. If you are unsure, repeat the directions you are given back to the examiner and ask for clarification. When starting with the front of the vehicle, move to the front and begin by checking the clearance marker and ID lights well as the alternating red and amber warning lights, headlights, and turn signals. Each should be the appropriate colors of red, amber, white, or clear and be clean, present, and not cracked, broken, or dirty. Check crosswalk mirrors to assure they are mounted securely and not cracked, broken, or dirty. Look under the vehicle for any fluid leaks. Release the left and right hood latches. Shout out clear and raise the hood carefully. Move to the right side of the engine compartment. Check the oil level by removing, wiping, reinserting, and then removing the dipstick. The oil level must be at or between the full and add marks on the dipstick. Tell the examiner that if the oil level is below the add mark, you would add oil at the fill spout and then recheck the level with the dipstick. Check the alternator. It should be securely mounted to the engine with no missing parts. The wires should be securely connected with no worn or burned insulation. The belt should have not more than three-quarter inch free play and not be cracked or frayed. Check the coolant level in the overflow tank. It should be between the fill and max lines. Hoses and connections should not be leaking or show signs of damage. Check the water pump. It should be securely mounted to the engine with no missing parts. Hoses and connections should not be leaking or show signs of damage. Check all belts on the front of the engine. They should have not more than three-quarter inch free play and not be frayed, cut, or dry rotted. Check the right front axle. Check the leaf springs for any missing, shifted, cracked, or broken leaves. Check the spring mounts to make sure they are not broken or cracked. Make sure there are no missing or damaged bushings. Check the U-bolts to make sure they are not broken, loose, or missing any nuts or other parts. Check the shock absorber to make sure it is secure, not damaged, or leaking. There should be no cracked or loose rubber bushings. Check the brake hoses, lines, and couplings to make sure they are not cracked, worn, or leaking. Check the brake chamber to ensure it is not leaking, cracked, or dented and securely mounted. Check the push rod and slack adjuster to make sure they are not broken, loose, or missing parts. The slack adjuster should have no more than one inch play with the parking brakes released. Check the drums and linings to ensure there are no cracks, dents, or holes. It should be free of dirt, oil, or grease. D-O-G. There should be no cracks in the drum greater than one half the friction area. The lining should not be worn thin, at least one quarter inch of lining on shoes. Check the tread, pressure, and condition, TPC. 
The steer tire should have at least 4 32nd inch tread evenly worn. The air pressure should be checked to meet the tire manufacturer's specs with a tire pressure gauge. There should be no cuts or other damage to tread or sidewalls. Each tire should have a metal valve stem and cap that is not missing, broken, or damaged. Check the inside and outside of the rim ensuring no cracks, bends, or weld repairs. Check the lug nuts to ensure they are all present free of cracks and distortions, and show no signs of looseness such as rust trails or shiny threads. Rust around the lug nuts indicates loose nuts. Shiny threads on the studs indicate cross-threaded lug nuts. Check the wheel hub to ensure there are no leaks. Adequate oil level can be determined through the removable rubber cap on the front of the hub. Move around to the left side of the engine compartment. Check the air compressor to ensure it is operating properly, mounted securely, and not damaged or leaking. Hoses and connections should not be leaking or show signs of damage. Check that the air compressor belt is not dry rotted or frayed and has no more than three quarter inch free play. Check the automatic transmission fluid level by removing the dipstick, wiping it clean, reinserting and removing to assure the level is between add and full. This check must be performed with the engine running, so you only need to describe the procedure, not actually perform it. Check the steering column and knuckle to ensure it is not bent or cracked, and all joints are not worn or loose. Check the power steering reservoir to be sure the fluid level is between the add and full marks using the appropriate cold or hot markings. Hoses and connections should not be leaking or show signs of damage. Check the pitman arm and drag link are not worn or cracked. Check that all joints and sockets are not worn or loose and that there are no missing nuts, bolts, or cotter keys. The connecting castle nuts should be tight and have a cotter key installed. Check all of the left front axle systems as done on the right side. Brake, suspension, and wheel systems. Check the driver side mirrors to assure they are mounted securely, not cracked, broken, or dirty, and have no illegal stickers. Check the access step to assure it is mounted securely, not missing any bolts, and is clear of debris that might cause you to slip. Check the stop arm to assure it moves freely and has no damaged or missing parts and is not leaking air. Check the side of the bus to assure there are no broken windows or damage. Check all lights and reflectors to assure they are the proper color and are present, clean, and not cracked. Check the frame to confirm that there are no cracks, broken welds, holds or other damage to the longitudinal frame members and cross members. Check the drive shaft to ensure there are no bends or cracks and that the couplings are secure and free of foreign objects. Check the exhaust system to ensure there is no damage or leaks and that it is connected tightly and mounted securely. Rust and carbon soot are signs of an exhaust leak. Check the air mounts to make sure they are not broken or cracked. Make sure there are no missing or damaged bushings. Check the leaf springs for any missing, shifted, cracked, or broken leaves. Check the spring mounts to make sure they are not broken or cracked. Make sure there are no missing or damaged bushings. Check the U-bolts to make sure they are not broken, loose, or missing any nuts or other parts. Check the shock absorber to make sure it is secure and not damaged or leaking. There should be no cracked or loose rubber bushings. Check the brake hoses, lines, and couplings to make sure they are not cracked, worn, or leaking. Check the brake chambers to ensure they are not leaking, cracked, or dented, and securely mounted. Check the push rods and slack adjusters 
to make sure they are not broken, loose, or missing parts. The slack adjuster should have no more than one inch play with the parking brakes released. Check the drums and linings to ensure there are no cracks, dents, or holes. It should be free of dirt, oil, and grease. D-O-G. There should be no cracks in the drum greater than one half the friction area. The lining should not be worn thin. At least one quarter inch of lining on shoes. Check the tires for tread, pressure, and condition. TPC. The rear tire should have at least 2 32nd inch tread evenly worn. The air pressure should be checked to meet the tire manufacturer's specs with a tire pressure gauge. There should be no cuts or other damage to tread or sidewalls. Each tire should have a metal valve stem and cap that is not missing, broken, or damaged. Check the inside and outside of the rim, ensuring no cracks, bends, or welded repairs. Check the lug nuts to ensure they are all present, free of cracks and distortions, and show no signs of looseness such as rust trails or shiny threads. Rust around the lug nuts indicates loose nuts. Shiny threads on the studs indicate cross-threaded lug nuts. Check the axle cover to make sure there is no damage, leaks, or missing nuts. Make sure the nuts are properly tightened. Check the alternating red and amber warning lights. Each should be present, not cracked, broken, or dirty, and be the appropriate colors of red or amber. Check the marker and ID lights to assure they are not cracked, broken, or dirty, and are red in color lights and turn signals to assure they are not cracked, missing, or dirty, and are red in color. Check that the emergency door is securely mounted with no damaged or missing parts on the hinges and that it opens and closes freely and has no broken windows. Move to the passenger door area. Check the access step to assure it is mounted securely, not missing any bolts, and is clear to breathe it might cause you to slip. Check the passenger side mirrors to assure they are mounted securely, not cracked, broken, or dirty, and have no illegal stickers. Check that the door opens and closes freely and has no broken windows. Check the student step light to assure it is not cracked, broken, missing, or dirty, and is white or clear in color. Check that the fuel cap is present, secure, and has an intact seal that is not cracked or dry rotted. Close the hood and latch it securely. Check the handrails to assure that they are securely mounted and clean. Check the steps to assure that they are free of debris with floor coverings securely fastened down. Check the aisle to assure the floor is free of debris with the covering securely fastened down. Check all seats to assure they are undamaged and securely mounted to the floor. Check all emergency exits to assure they are clearly marked, not obstructed, and open freely. Check the rear view student mirror to assure it is not broken, mounted securely, adjusted correctly, and clear of stickers and clean. When seated, check the seat belt to ensure there are no tears or frays and it latches securely. Check the required safety equipment. Spare electrical fuses, three reflective triangles, properly charged and rated fire extinguisher. Check for a first aid and fluid collection kit. Perform a safe start as follows. Make sure the transmission is in neutral. Turn the key on and wait for the instruments to cycle through. Wait for the start indicator light to go out. Start the engine. Check the water temperature gauge to be sure the gauge is working and that the warning light is off. Okay. The water temperature gauge should show the temperature is normal or increasing to normal. Check the oil pressure gauge to be sure the gauge is working and that the warning light goes out. 
the oil pressure gauge should show the pressure is normal or increasing to normal. Check the voltmeter to be sure the alternator is charging the batteries and the warning light is off. Check the air supply gauges to be sure they are working properly. Build the air pressure to governor cutout at roughly 125 PSI. The governor should also cut in at about 100 PSI. Turn on the headlights and check that the instrument lights also come on. Check the high beam indicator light on the instrument cluster. Turn on the left and right turn signals, checking that each indicator light works. Turn on the four-way flashers and check that both turn signal indicator lights flash. Also check that the brake light, turn signal, and alternating warning light indicators are working on the side dash panel. Run the heater and defroster, checking them with your hand to make sure they are both working. Check the windshield to ensure it is clean with no illegal stickers, no obstructions, or damage to the glass. Check your mirrors to make sure they are clean, adjusted properly from the inside. Turn on the windshield wipers and make sure the wiper arms and blades are secure, not damaged, and operating smoothly. Run the windshield washer to make sure it works and is full of washer fluid. Next is the air brake test. Check that both primary and secondary systems are at full air pressure, 125 PSI, and that the governor cuts out. Begin pressing and releasing the brake pedal to reduce the air pressure to below 100 PSI. Check that the governor cuts in. Build air pressure back to full, 125 PSI. Turn off the engine and turn the key back to the on position. However, you do not want to restart the engine. Push in the parking brake valve and check that the system loses less than 2 PSI in one minute. Firmly press the brake pedal and check that the system loses no more than 3 PSI per minute. Tell the examiner that you are checking the low pressure warning system, which should activate before the air in the system drops below 60 PSI. Begin depressing and releasing the brake pedal until the low pressure warning system activates. Once the warning light and buzzer activate, tell the examiner. Tell the examiner that you are going to check the emergency brake system and that it should activate between 20 and 45 PSI. Fan air out of the system until the parking brake valve pops out. Tell the examiner that you are going to test the parking brakes. Perform another safe start. Build up full air pressure. Place the bus in gear and tug against the parking brake to assure it will hold the bus. Place the bus in neutral. Next, tell the examiner that you are going to test the service brakes. Exit the bus, remove the wheel chalk, re-enter the bus, and fasten your seat belt. Place the bus in gear and move forward at about 5 miles per hour. Apply the service brake firmly, checking for pulling, delayed stopping, and unusual noises. When performing an external light check, perform the following checks. Check headlights, low and high beam. Check turn signals left and right. Check four-way flashers. Check alternating amber warning lights. Check alternating red warning lights. Check stop arm function and lights and crosswalk guard functions. Check strobe light. Check brake lights, turn signals, four-way flashers, alternating amber warning lights and alternating red warning lights on the rear of the bus.